Hey y'all, Dan from danwagner.co with a guide to extracting uniques like a champ using the collect uniques function we wrote moments ago in the linked article down in the description for this particular video. So if you imagine a situation where we have two code systems, a U1 code and a TPS code, and we want to identify all the uniques amongst these two, this collect uniques function is a perfect way to do so, especially because this would be very challenging with the traditional methods like say a pivot table or an advanced auto filter. By leveraging the function that we wrote, we can identify these uniques in a hurry. And so in this example, because it's nice and small, we can quickly see that there are two duplicates amongst this entire group of 10. So we can see that ABC is duplicated, and we can also see that DEF is duplicated as well. So if we have 10 total codes and two duplicates, we know that we should get eight uniques out. So let's go ahead and run this code really fast to make sure that it works the way you'd expect. We get a prompt that says select the range from which you'd like to extract uniques. I'm going to go ahead and select all the cells that I'm interested in. Click OK and boom. We get a new sheet with exactly eight resulting rows. We only see ABC and DEF are duplicates one time. And then we see the rest of the gang down here for a total of eight. Awesome. We know that the code works. Let's take a second to walk through as the, the, the script runs so we can identify all the most important items that are happening. So after we declare all of our variables, the first thing we do is prompt the user to select a range by hand. And this is actually kind of nice because oftentimes we have to do the exploration and setup steps of the four-step VBA process in our code. But in this case, we're kind of just handing that off to the user. And that's helpful because the user can select exactly what he or she wants, and we don't need to waste any precious lines of code identifying the interesting range, right? We're simply letting the user pick what they need to pick. Now, one important note that I mentioned in the post below is that we have this assignment statement right here wrapped in an on error resume next block. And the reason we do that is because we want to allow our user to click cancel. So if we had commented this on error block out and ran the script, then selected cancel, we get a runtime error. And that's something we always want to avoid if possible. So we use this on error resume next along with this if right here underneath the assignment and the on error resume next block. And what we're doing is checking to see if this variable, this range target, is nothing. And if it's nothing, we know that the user clicked cancel. And in that case, we want to exit gracefully. So now that we have on error resume next back in the mix, if we were to run the script and click cancel, we wouldn't end up with an error and it would be very nice for our end user rather than having him or her be stuck with a runtime error, which is just a total bummer. So moving right along, we take advantage of the collect uniques function that we wrote uh, up here. And I go into more detail on that in the linked post. But right here, I want to stay super focused on the actual extracting of the uniques and, and writing them out to a sheet in a usable way. So all we have to do, because we've written collect uniques already, is simply assign it to this uniques collection variable. And then this is where it gets kind of interesting here. I prefer to use variant arrays whenever possible in a situation when I know I'm going to need to write values out to a worksheet because they're lightning fast and they translate into range variables really nicely, which is what we do down here. But loading up a variant array can be kind of tricky because variant arrays are zero indexed which is interesting for Excel VBA because most 
objects that you'll be working with are one indexed. So you need to make sure that you're, say, writing to column zero, which is interesting uh, in and of itself here. And you also need to make sure that you start in row zero inside this variant array of uniques. But once you get through this tricky indexing, all you need to do is stringify each item from the collection of uniques and write it into the variant variable. And then finally, in these three lines down here, we create a new worksheet. We set up a range where we'll write all of our unique values to. And here we can take advantage of this collection.count method, which is really handy when we need to know exactly how many items are inside a collection. And so we create this range and then we can simply set the variant array that we created up here equal to that range and be done with it all in one shot, no loop necessary. And so by taking advantage of variant arrays as well as the collect uniques function that we wrote a little bit earlier in the linked article, you can pull out uniques in a really intuitive and really performant way. And if you're anything like me, you get peppered with questions about uniques or how many X's are in Y all the time. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to leave a comment or reach out. And thank you so much.